Our snap. Good evening, I'm Kevin Christopher. And I'm Nancy Cox. Thank you for joining us at 6. Customers are out tens of thousands of dollars after a famed Garrett County furniture store shut down. And they're frustrated because they say they weren't given any warning about the closure. They also find it suspicious because this is happening months after the Rocky Top store caught fire. LEX 18's Kylan Mills has more in the big story at 6. A once booming business with a sterling reputation, Today, the lights are off, the gate is locked, and an eviction notice is posted outside of Rocky Top Furniture in Lancaster. We put all this time and effort into it, and then, you know, there's no letters like, sorry, we're going out of business or anything like that, or that we'll refund your money. Greg Beagle of Northern Kentucky is one of the many customers who ordered custom wood furniture from the business that's been featured on the DIY network. He says he spent $24,000 there to furnish his and his wife's new dream home. Beagle tells us he had no concerns despite a fire there back in July until no one returned his calls last week. He then saw an article from a Knoxville media outlet about the Pigeon Forge location closing. We're in shell shock because now we know we have to start this process all over again. And, you know, are we going to get a the same type of deal or are we going to get a worse deal? Reviews online show other customers with similar experiences over the last few months. Some writing that they paid, but their furniture never showed. Outside the store, we ran into the business founder and current property owner. Tommy Mitchell broke down in tears, saying he sold the store in good faith and that he's heartbroken for the customers now flooding him with calls trying to get answers. As for what is going on behind these doors, Mitchell referred us to his attorney. She says we should know more soon, but for now she wants people to know the business is not owned by the Mitchells and customers with issues should contact the Garrett County attorney. It's really highly suspicious as far as uh, uh, how legit the company was that bought it from the previous owners. Covering the news in Garrett County, Kylan Mills, LEX 18 News. Our calls and messages to Rocky Top have not been returned. A Powell County school bus driver is under arrest, not for anything involving students. The charge centers around what police call the poor living conditions of her own children. Lee Xatis Lee Searcy has more about her arrest and the arrest of her husband, who was once a school bus driver until he got into trouble. Diana Patrick was not driving a Powell County school bus today. Instead, she was in the Powell County Jail. Both Patrick and her husband, Jesse, charged with endangering the welfare of a minor after what Stanton police say they encountered here Sunday. Officers were checking out a report of a couple fighting when they walked into the Patrick's apartment and described in this report a house in total disarray of uncleanliness and unsafe. Police found piles of dog feces and a five-gallon bucket with what appeared to be human feces almost full. They also found flies surrounding doors. One officer wrote he had to retreat from the residence to vomit. Also in the home, the couple's 17-year-old daughter. Their nine-year-old child was at church. News of the couple's arrest drew strong responses, especially the fact a school bus driver was charged. It's bad. It's sad. Jesse Patrick faces additional drug offenses. We actually reported on him back in 2009 when he was a Powell County school bus driver. He was arrested when police say he drove the high school cross country team while under the influence of drugs. The couple will be arraigned in the morning. Covering the news in Powell County, Lee Searcy, LEX 18 News. We're told the children are now living elsewhere. The Patricks did not want to speak to us from jail. A Sunday night standoff in Laurel County led to two arrests. Deputies say it started as an argument between 51-year-old Brett Larson and 43-year-old Carrie Morgan at their home on Patton Road in East Bernstadt. When officials arrived, they say the two refused to come outside. A nine-year-old child who was inside at the time later told deputies that Larson locked her outside in short sleeves with no coat. Larson and Morgan were arrested after two hours of negotiations with officials. We're told numerous weapons were found inside that home. Yeah, we're kind of stuck in the drearies out there today. The evening doesn't promise to be much better for you on the Max Track Live Doppler. 
We can find you some cold rain out there. We are looking up toward Fleming County, just past through Ewing now from Flemingsburg up to about Wallingford up then into Lewis County. That's scooting on off to the northeast. Another area is running from you know, just south of Richmond going out there by the depot down to Berea and Kingston. Continues through Irvin back to Stanton and Slade there along the Mountain Parkway on up eventually to about Frenchburg there along Highway 460 and elsewhere we've got patches of drizzle and sprinkles around. Future track shows that the light rain continues for a good chunk of the evening. It's scattered, but life gets a little more interesting as we get you into the hours after midnight as cold air begins to slide in from the northwest, encounters the lingering moisture, and the end result is a very brief changeover to a little bit of snow at the very tail end. It's a possibility, so your morning commute could see some snowflakes flying, but temperature should be at or just above freezing, and if that's the case, no worries. Uh, we work our way then through the rest of Tuesday and that shows the clouds and the cold temperatures will hold sway. We'll talk about if there's any change coming in a couple of minutes. <laughs> okay, th thanks Bill. As winter weather makes its way here, the city of Lexington is getting ready to tackle the snow. The snow plan has some changes to it this time around and that means it could take a little bit longer to get some roads clear. LEX 18's Carolina Buchek has details. When Lexington gets its first big snow, plow crews will be ready. Making sure everything works okay. We took delivery of some more salt last week, uh, so we're doing everything to get prepared. But this year, the crews will likely work a little harder. That's because they used to get help from a few private contractors. We were contracting with uh, five plows uh, that allowed us to do uh, a add some additional lane miles because of budget cuts. Those contractors were eliminated last year. Now, luckily we didn't get much snow, so crews were able to plow things quickly. But this year, if we get a bad storm, it could take longer to clear some of the roads. Um, th that did extend the timeline for completion of the plan from 24 to 36 hours. Another big change to the city snow plan is Citation Boulevard. It used to take several city plows to keep it clear during a storm, but this year the state is taking over. Um, that actually frees up a couple trucks for us to help us get into the neighborhoods there uh, a, a little sooner, so we're excited about that. UK will also be responsible for internal streets on campus, but anything else inside of New Circle, that's up to the city. Covering the news in Lexington, Carolina Bujak, LEX 18 News. In other news tonight, state police have arrested a man for the shooting death of a woman found in Leslie County. Officers found Dustin Stidham in the woods near home on Lower McIntosh Road Saturday. And according to police, Stidham shot and killed Paige Murphy last Thursday. They say the two were fighting at the time. Stidham is charged with murder and he's being held in the Leslie County Jail. The Bishop of the Catholic Diocese of Owensboro says the diocese will work to be more open and transparent about how it handles allegations of sex abuse by priests. The Reverend William Medley says he'll have former members of the review board, which investigates reports of sexual abuse, review the list of 27 priests who have been accused of abuse in the diocese since 1937 to determine if those names should be made public. A Lexington World War II veteran was surprised just a few days before Veterans Day with a letter that was written in 1945 yeah. by his late brother, who was also a soldier. The West Virginia woman who found it at a local peddler's mall a few months ago made it her mission to get it back to the family. Alexa Helwig has that story. And then about three days later, I got a letter from my father that he had been killed. Bill McCord looks at a picture on his wall, remembering the late Lieutenant David McCord, his only brother. He was killed just months before the end of World War II. Do you think about him a lot? Or? Yes, I do. Tonight, McCord holds in his hands another memory of his brother he didn't even know existed. And it's all thanks to a West Virginia woman who picked up a letter at a Lexington Peddler's Mall dated back to 1945. I'm like, oh, this is... This is awful. This letter is here and this belonged to someone and I wonder if he made it home and I wonder what happened to him. So that letter was addressed to Mrs. John McCord at Silva Cola Farm in Lexington, the house he grew up in. Jenny DeCola made it her mission to get in contact with the family and hand return it. People don't want to go out of their way to help somebody else. But she did. But she did. With this newfound memory, McCord thinks how life would be different if his brother had returned from war. We probably would have ended up as partners with 
and raising thoroughbred horses. And in recognition of Veterans Day, Jenny called Bill thanking him for his service. The two are now lifelong friends. Covering the news in Lexington, Alexa Helwig, LEX 18 News. Perfect Veterans Day story. That was nice. Well, the UK football team has to play one more game this weekend before it faces off with rival Louisville. They'll play Middle Tennessee State this Saturday and then wrap up the regular season with a trip to Louisville to face the Cardinals, who will have an interim coach after Bobby Petrino was fired yesterday. Lorenzo Ward is the man in charge through their final two games. And kickoff was announced today. Cats and Cards at 7 p.m. a week from Saturday. Police say someone stole from a home while the family was in the process of moving. Now police are turning to you for help to catch them. That's next in Crime Stoppers.